Today, we're going to review the Alliance Mobilization event. This is an event I've seen in many games, and it's now here in Rise of Kingdoms. And there's always ways that you can get advantage. So in this video, we'll explore the rules and talk about some of the best quests and the most value you can pull down. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chess Cool Gaming, and I have honestly played a version of this event in four other games. And most frequently, the way this works is that you, as an alliance, get a score, and you put points on the scoreboard by doing quests. You pull those quests from a series that are available, and you can even refresh some quests if you're an officer to find ones that you think are more appropriate for your alliance. That's really the core of this. Do quests, get points, pick rewards. But of course, there's a bunch of nuance to this that isn't immediately obvious, so we should walk through those things so that you can make the best decisions possible. I will say very simply up front, though, by doing the quests that give you more points, that's almost certainly going to get the most value possible for your alliance. And the worst thing you can do is take a quest and then not complete it because the number of quest opportunities is limited per player. There's only so many you can do. So let's go over the rules very, very briefly. As many of you have already experienced, there's a registration window, you get matched with other alliances, and you need to have a certain number of players to even participate in any of that. Uh, you need at least 30 and an upwards of 150 participants, and that list cannot be changed after you sign up. You need to be City Hall 16 or higher, and you can only participate in one alliance. The system will randomly group alliances in the same league for the event. During the competition, your alliance's participating members can accept quests to get points. You can only have one quest, however, at a time. And during the competition, each participant will have up to 10 free quest attempts required to accept a quest and can purchase one more with gems. I've seen that exact style in many games. It looks like you can only get one total. Sometimes in these, you know, for this style of event, you can get one per day, but I think it is one total. So sounds like it's 11 attempts total. And when your alliance's total points reaches certain thresholds, its event level is increased. And during the rewards phase, you can choose level rewards to receive based on your alliance's event level. So again, you accumulate points, your alliance gets more levels, you get more rewards with each level that you get. And then after the competition, your alliance will be ranked within your group. Now, there are a few other rules. You can only accept quests, increase quest progress, turn in quests, and claim alliance level rewards in the alliance that you signed up for the event. So switching alliances... You can't participate. Um, and only alliance leaders or officers participating in the event can refresh unaccepted quests. This is a very common tactic. The officers refresh to get rid of the low point ones, and then members can take the high point quests. Um, if you fail your quest, the quest attempt is used up. That's it. It's gone. It's not refunded. Um, and after each alliance quest, whether uh, it's completed and turned in, um, refreshed by the alliance leader or officers, or failed, you will need to wait 15 minutes for a new one, which, by the way, you can see. Um, these quests are refreshing, whether it was an officer going in and manually refreshing them or somebody completed the quest. That's the board of quests, which, like, by the way, uh, there's almost no quests available for me right now other than to spend gems. GG. Ay, ay, ay. Now, there are more rules, by the way. Um, there are leagues. Uh, the event is divided into five leagues. Fearless Bronze, Dazzling Silver, Brave Gold, Immortal Diamond, and the Supreme Suzerain. Uh, your alliance will be placed into Fearless Bronze for the first time you participate. You can be promoted, relegated, or remain in the same league uh, within the ranking, uh, based on the ranking within your group. Um, and the number of alliances promoted or relegated, that's demoted basically, um, in each group depends on the league that you're in. Uh, and there's more details below. We don't need to go into all the details, but know that they are here at the start. You're going to be in Fearless Bronze, and the top five are promoted. So most are promoted out of Fearless Bronze at the start. Um, now, from here, we can go to the rewards. And during the competition, you can earn points by completing and turning in the quests. We talked about that. 
At the end of the competition, there'll be a rewards phase. And at that time, you can claim rewards based on your event level. You can choose one of the three available rewards at each level. The higher your alliance's league, the better the rewards for each level. Uh, and during the rewards phase, you can only claim rewards for the alliance that signed you up for the event. Any rewards you fail to claim will be lost. Man, I... I'd love if they just sent me a random reward instead of just like, all right, you lose them all. So remember to claim your rewards is what I'm trying to say. Now, after the competition phase, members of the top five alliances with the highest uh, alliance event level in their respective leagues will receive an alliance ranking reward. So, uh, you know, you get a little bit here. I mean, five days of speeds, all right, and 20 hundred gem tokens ain't bad. 40 total keys. Uh, being rank one is not so bad. Um, and that is just for the, oh, that is actually the Supreme Suzerain. Okay. Uh, that's Supreme Suzerain. We're all starting down here in Plebville, uh, Fearless Bronze. So, yeah, I mean, the rewards aren't all that crazy for being number one in Fearless Bronze. GG. Okay. Um, now, here's where we can go in and start to look at the actual mechanics here. As I mentioned, you can click into the quest and you can see the time limit on the quest, the requirements of the quest and the points that it gives. This is all very important. So, for example, you can see up here the time limit is three hours. At the end of the three hours, if this quest is not done, um, and done means that you complete it and claim it as done in here, um, then uh, you forfeit the points and you forfeit your quest opportunity. You can see in the bottom right, you have 10 quest opportunities. You can smash the plus, get an extra quest opportunity for 600 gems, which is not cheap. However... We'll talk about the rewards, and the rewards are actually substantial. So there could be um, reason for an alliance to be spending gems to progress their rewards, okay? Besides just ranking and pride, right? Um, it looks like the spend gems one was refreshed just now, which is kind of interesting. You can see uh, that happened like two and a half minutes ago because we know it's a 15-minute refresh timer. Now, the best quests are obviously highlighted in gold here. They show you, like, hey, these are the most premium ones to do. Um, but they often end up being more tricky or, in some cases, just require money. Um, I can switch back over to my main account to show you that I already completed a quest over there that required me to buy four bundles that gave an alliance chest. And I was like, all right, I'll bite. I mean, often that's what this event is designed to do, is to, you know, give a lot of points for the things that are rewarding you uh, for spending. Uh, and, I mean, it, it kind of is what it is. Um, that That's frequently the design of this event. Uh, can I show you the quest that I just completed with that? I'm not sure that I can. Um, here, Here's one of them. Tempting gifts. Purchase one bundle containing an alliance shaft. Wow, 120 points. Sheesh. Um, I did one that was 160 points, I think. Um, and that one, here it is, required me to pick up four bundles containing Alliance chests. Now, it turns out the daily special offer is a really great way to pull down three chests of credit toward one of these things. So if that's what you're up to, um, consider the daily special offer if you are going to spend for this event. But you really don't have to. Uh, there's plenty of other quests, like, for example, increase your troop or tech power by 93,000 gives 120 points. There are other ways to do this. Increase your troop power by 120,000 points. Some of these will obviously be more favorable if you're in KVK and you already have other quests overlapping to go do these sorts of things. So, uh, you know, which ones you choose could depend in part on what you're up to. Um, use 90 or 9,300 minutes of speed ups on research or training. Again, like if you're in Season of Conquest KVKs, that's uh, really an easy choice. Defeat 200 Barbarian Troops, and that's a lot of AP, actually. Um, now, I I've got nine out of quest attempts remaining. I can gem one more, uh, and this event lasts for seven days. So don't be discouraged if your board is just completely occupied um, at the start because you'll have plenty of time over the, the days. So let's get into the rewards, all right? Um, we smash the level rewards button, and you can see as you advance, you get to pick one of the three rewards available at each level. So uh, some of these rewards do get really good, like three formation choice chests that are legendary. Uh, hell yeah, man. They even reveal the chance of getting an inscribed legendary armament and a regular legendary armament, which I find really fascinating. So there are really great things, and this... Um, later stuff, unlocked after your alliance reaches the Dazzling Silver League, Brave Gold League, Immortal Diamond, and then the Supreme Suzerain. So that doesn't happen for multiple rounds. So I think many alliances, 
in this first run of the event are going to cap this out very easily at level eight. We currently are at level two. Uh, my other alliance is at level three, and it's only been like a couple hours since the event even showed up. Presumably, the number of points you need will go up for each level as you progress through this. But if they don't, then this is just going to be super fast to get your progression. And I think that covers the majority of the things in the event. Um, one thing you might have noticed is that little refresh button up over here. I'm an officer in SW, so I have the refresh option. Um, refreshing will, as I mentioned earlier, uh, just change it out and take that 15-minute timer. So if you're wondering, what does that look like? There it is. Um, so overall, I think this is a cool event, actually. Um, I think that, you know, the little slant towards spending, um, it might change people's behavior, but for the most part, I think people who are going to spend are spending anyways, and they're just going to do a quest while they do it. Keep in mind, this is a 24-hour time limit for some of these spending-related quests. So something you can do is time this over the course of multiple resets so you can get a reset of the shop potentially to make that a little bit easier if that's what you want. Also keep in mind, it's it doesn't care what level of bundle you're buying. So, you know, a $50 bundle that gives one of those chests or a $100 bundle that gives a gold chest, it still counts as one chest. Um, and on the topic of one chest you might consider buying while we're here, uh, the current version of Lucerne Scrolls, volume 29, has, uh, let's see, all the way at the end, the helmet over here, which is Deadwood Crown. So gathering speed of 12%. Uh, and then the boots are Shio's Return, which like, all right, we got plenty of ways to get those, all right? So if you enjoyed the video, do me a huge favor, throw a like on here and consider subscribing to the channel. I recognize I'm a little bit delinquent here on collecting these troops, but I might find a quest that rewards me for that. So just make sure that you time your daily activities and time your picking up one of these quests around what you're going to be doing in game because the worst thing you can do is take a quest and not complete it because you don't get that chance back if you found the video helpful throw a like on here subscribe if you're looking for something else entertaining to watch uh my boy chadsky got imprisoned card will be in the end screen for that oh and he also got rallied the other day card will be in the end screen for that so if you like watching crazy city rally stuff check those out